have Michelle and we have Jennifer, but we call you Jen. Yeah. Um, so Michelle, maybe you can tell us a little bit about you and your horse. So he's 13, you've had him for a year and a half. Yep, he came from Germany. He's a German model. And you've been working him at? So you're working for fourth level and veering towards pre St. George. Okay. And in an ideal world, if I could wave a magic wand for you and change something about what happens in your riding and with him, what would that be? My right arm tends to get a little too strong and holding. Uh -huh. and on the right side, the right leg and the right arm okay. tends to hold too much. Right. And I'm not being more balanced. Yes. Baseball. Okay. So you get him heavier in your right hand than your left and would like to have some answers for that one. Okay. All right. And Jen? Oh. Okay, so, so he's a Lusitano, he's a Lusitano stallion. He came, um, you picked him out in Brazil when he was three, did some of the early work on him, then somebody else had him for a while. You have him back. Yep. Yep. And um, are heading towards Pre St. George this summer, you hope. So we've got two horses at a similar level. So, so Jennifer's saying this, having done a clinic with me for the last three days, she's saying, I really want to get to know how to channel him between my aids and not have him ping backwards and forwards. So do you remember we were talking inside there about this idea of the corridor of aids? And um, Jennifer discovered the other day that her, her seat bones were rather wide apart and her whole corridor was wide enough that the horse could go ping, pong, ping, pong, ping, pong. And she didn't have him where she could really steer him down a narrow, organized line. So she's giving you the kind of answer to that question that riders will tend to give when they've done some of this work, right? Um, rather than a more generalized answer that folks will tend to give. Although the heavier in one hand than the other answer is a very common answer too. So let's get these guys just to be walking on here on the left rein. So we're doing the same thing we've done with the other folks. We could look at Jen here and go, if we took her horse out from underneath her, how would she land on the riding arena? On her feet. We've pretty much got that 45 degree angle thigh. We've got a good shoulder hip heel. We've got ourselves a good parallel vertical back and front. In other words, she's been working on it. Yeah. But unlike um, some of the less experienced riders we saw earlier, where we looked at Nancy and said, yeah, and it looks kind of forced and not quite comfortable and like she's trying to get it and it's kind of sorta. Of. Jen looks like it's more part of who she is. Yeah, not quite part of who Heather is in quite that same glunk, it couldn't possibly be different way, but way more like she owns it and it's part of who she is and that her body can hang in there more easily. This is Michelle's first experience of biomechanics meets an experienced rider with a lot of good training behind her, but not from a biomechanical perspective. So we look at Michelle and we go, how would she land on the riding arena? And she'd topple back. She's pretty good heel to hip. Her shoulders are behind her hip. So she's slightly behind vertical. She may or may not know that. Do you know that? Yeah. And she may or may not think that's the right place to be. And it may be that I have a different definition of right to the definition of right that Michelle has grown up with, and that'll come out in the wash. As we look at these two riders, who has naturally higher tone? Michelle. Yeah? Michelle has got one of those for a woman, unusually high-toned, firm, neat kind of bodies. You know, uh, she's got what a lot of people would consider a rider's body. Jen probably wishes we could take her thighs and stretch them. Evolve another six inches in her height. But you know, when you're five foot something, you have to do six foot something biomechanics in miniature. So in terms of her body type, Michelle has a huge amount going for her. That quality of high tone is something that when you don't have it naturally, you really have to work on. When you have it naturally, it is a huge plus. Okay, um, if you look at Michelle and go, where would her chest aim? Okay, and you look at Jen and you go, where would her chest aim? About his pole. 
right? And that's going to be different for each rider depending on their height and the carriage of the horse. So you can't make a rule that says the horse's chest should aim to the, the rider's chest should aim to the horse's pole, right? But when the rider's chest aims up over the horse's ears, then we have a kind of question, 